Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. In today's review, we're going to be taking a look at the newly released Mechanical Alliance Thunder Warrior, also known as a third party transformable masterpiece representation of Blitzwing based on, of course, his appearance from the Transformers Bumblebee solo movie. Now, if you are looking to add this figure here to your collection, he is currently available and in stock right now over at Shozy store. And for that, of course, I shall include a link down in the description box below. Before we get into the review, I would really appreciate it if you could all smash the like button, hit the subscribe button, and of course click the notification bell so that you can be notified anytime I upload a new review. When this figure was first unveiled by Mechanical Alliance I knew straight away immediately that I had to add him to my collection as Blitzwing is one of my all-time favorite Decepticon live action movie designs and up until this point I really don't believe that we have gotten the definitive representation of this character which can actually transform. The studio series figure did come incredibly close however had a very inaccurate looking jet mode whereas this figure here is pretty much spot on to how he appeared in the movie, although that's not to say that he is without his problems. Despite him looking fantastic in both robot mode as well as, of course, his jet mode, there are some issues in regards to the tolerances and the transformation, I have got to be honest, is an absolute nightmare. However, do not worry, we shall get into all of that and more in this review. Starting off, firstly, we shall begin by taking a look here at Blitzwing's accessories, the first of which is his plasma rifle that we see him try and use to take down Bumblebee in the opening act of the movie, the sculpt and the paintwork for this piece has come out terrifically well. They really have done a splendid job. I haven't seen paintwork like this on any other third party company than Devil Savior, so they certainly are upping their game and it looks fantastic. We of course do also get the spike weapon that he does de-voice Bumblebee with in the movie and much like the plasma rifle, the sculpt work looks terrific. Unfortunately, there are no paint applications applied to this piece, which I would have liked to have seen perhaps a rusty wash so that it could have looked a little more authentic when actually pegged onto the figure's body. But regardless, you can see some nice Nice details there such as the fingers which do actually wrap around this section and overall it definitely does resemble what we saw in the movie. As far as weapon implementation is concerned you're going to want to turn your attention here to this arm and essentially just pop the wrist clean off. As we take a look here in the interior of the plasma blaster we do indeed get a circular port that will align up appropriately with this post. So just snap that in there over the top and we also do have a slot with a peg underneath that this here will also clip into place and I love how seamless the plasma rifle does actually look when inserted onto Blitzwing's arm. They have done a terrific job. You can see that all of the mechanical detail from the actual forearm itself truly does give you the impression that this has actually transformed out of the arm much like we saw in the movie and he definitely does look like a formidable force whilst wielding it. We can of course pop this wrist off here very easily and insert the blade on so if you have any third party bumblebees or any bumblebees for that matter they better be ducking for cover as Blitzwing is coming to devoice them. Super awesome accessories and considering we didn't really see Blitzwing do all that much in the movie, I'm unsure as to what else they could include with this figure. Bringing Blitzwing in here for a closer look, upon seeing some of the initial images of this character, to be honest, I actually thought this figure here was fan made. It looked so, so awesome and actually getting him in hand, I just cannot believe that this figure here can transform. The sculpt and the paintwork looks absolutely fantastic and it is such a shame that ultimately the tolerances do unfortunately let this robot mode down. However, we shall discuss that later on in the review. You can see that as far as the head sculpt is concerned, it is a perfect recreation of the face mask that we saw in the movie. This piece here is indeed detachable, so if you wish to have a more Starscream-esque looking face design, that is something that you can certainly do. Something which I would recommend to be cautious of is the actual pegs that this piece here does have. Unfortunately, upon removing it for the first time, I did actually snap one. As you can see, they are very, very tiny, so definitely just take your time when actually trying to remove the face mask, but overall, as far as the sculpt and paintwork is concerned, it looks fantastic. As we turn our attention here to the rest of the body this here is an absolute eye feast the detail and the paintwork truly does look like something that you would see from a free zero dlx figure it looks terrific the overall design of this character is pretty much spot on to the actual cgi model and it is remarkable once again that it can transform you can see the darker wash that they have applied over the top of the plastic which once again really does allow for a very authentic feel i do know that there is another version i believe it is created by zeta toys and whilst i do not have that figure in hand i am able to tell just by some of the images of that character that the paintwork is nowhere near as good as what we get here with this figure. You can see that as far as the smoky nature here to the cockpit is concerned, it looks so, so accurate to the movie. The mechanical detailing, the subtle decals that are placed all the way throughout Blitzwing's body truly does make this figure here look remarkable. Of course, we've got the USAF logo here at the top, as well as even if we turn around here to the other side, an actual USAF decal there, which is fantastic. Spinning here to the bottom of Blitzwing, you can see that as far as the skull work is concerned, once again, it just looks terrific. 
terrific. The proportions, I believe, too, have come out exceptionally well. You can see there for the fingers, very pointy and menacing, and the articulation just adds to the overall presentation that this figure does indeed have. As we turn our attention here down to the lower section of the legs, if I had any critiques, it's that I do believe the thighs are slightly too thin, although that is probably due to the nature of the transformation, and to be honest, it's more of a minor critique than anything. And then finally, taking a look here towards the bottom of Blitzwing's legs, these here look very accurate to the movie, and I love how they have actually placed the thrusters here, much like we saw from the actual film. Spinning around here to the back, the paint and detailing does indeed continue, so of course we have got the thruster here as well as all of this fantastic mechanical detail, which is actually revealed here in robot mode. You do not see any of this when we do get him transformed up into the jet, and then as we take a look here towards the back of the legs, certain panels do rotate and flip around to reveal robot mode mechanical detail, which once again I think is a really nice touch, and then taking a look here towards the back, considering how much of the jet does actually store here in the legs. I believe they've done a fantastic job in actually compressing it from a side profile. It really does look incredibly natural and exactly how we saw from the film. Now turning to Blitzwing's articulation, this is where you are going to see some of the tolerance issues that I do have, at least here on my copy. So for the head, we do get a ball joint, so this can look left to right as well as can look up and down and of course can tilt side to side ever so slightly. The arms can rotate forwards and backwards and the shoulder piece will indeed actually move with them, although you can hinge them out to the side if you do decide to hinge this section up which can allow for a fantastic range of motion there on a ratchet joint of course they can actually move forwards without the shoulder piece moving so if you just hinge that section up you are able to hinge these sections here forwards and backwards we do get a rotation here at the bicep as well as a double joint here at the elbow which once again too is on a ratchet joint ball joint here at the hand and the fingers are indeed individually articulated at three points which i thought was astonishing especially considering how skinny they actually are they really have done a great job we do get a full rotation here at the waist the legs are on ratchet joints so can kick forwards all the way although are slightly restricted due to the nature of the design but if you just move some of those components out of the way you can see you can definitely get a very high kick of course they can ratchet back although once again it is slightly restricted due to the nature of the design we do get a ratchet joint here out to the side which i was very surprised to see the ratchet actually being strong enough to hold up all of the weights here as this figure does actually have some die cast elements to him as well we do get a rotation here at the thigh as well as a double joint here at the knee which allows for once again a fantastic range of motion and then turning our attention here to the foot this can pivot forwards and backwards as well as of course rock side to side now despite the figure looking fantastic and being very well articulated the tolerances do actually suck on this figure you can see here that this entire region is very easy to detach i have found the wings to be an absolute nightmare at the moment i have actually got them wedged between some of the jet kibble which i'm unsure if accurate to the actual instructions as the instructions are rubbish but if you do actually wedge that in there they do stay quite firm but if we turn our attention here to the legs none of this here actually stays into place it does have designated tabs and slots but it's just so easy to actually knock out of place and it can create for a very floppy and rather frustrating experience when actually trying to pose this figure i have also found some of the die cast pieces to be way too heavy for the screws you can see that this section here which is actually the hill spur does have a tendency to keep dropping every time i do pick the figure up which once again can be rather frustrating and i have actually tried to tighten the screw and it just doesn't appear to be doing anything to that at all so i really wish that there were just perhaps some adjustments to the tolerances as overall if some of the joints were perhaps slightly tighter this figure here probably would have been a 10 out of 10 as when you take displayability into account he looks fantastic it's just unfortunate that he doesn't hold together all that well here for a third party transformable Bumblebee movie size comparison, we have Thunder Warrior compared next to the Transcraft Bumblebee, as well as of course the Toy World Bumblebee movie Optimus Prime. And as far as the display is concerned, I have no doubt in saying that these three figures here are by far the best representations of the Bumblebee movie characters that do indeed transform. The third party companies are just knocking it out of the park as far as these live action movie figures are concerned. And Thunder Warrior is no exception. He looks remarkable as far as his robot mode is concerned. And believe me, when we turn him into his phantom jet mode he looks just as good if not better it is just a shame that some of the tolerances do let the figure down in some instances but as far as the display is concerned this at the moment is my definitive transformable bumblebee movie display shelf and here for a blitzwing size comparison we have thunder warrior compared next to the officially licensed 30 dlx version now of course as 30 is an officially licensed company they are unable to actually transform their figures so in that regards it is slightly unfair but just as far as the robot modes are concerned thunder warrior does 
does come exceptionally close to being pretty much spot on with the actual CGI model. If you were to glance over at Thunder Warrior, you would easily be forgiven for actually thinking that it is the 3.0 version as they have come that close to nailing his robot mode look and in my opinion I am just so impressed with how close the designers did come to actually matching his look from the movie. Before we proceed into the transformation segment, something which is worth noting is that Mechanical Alliance did actually incorporate an LED function here into Blitzwing's head. So in order to activate that, there is a tiny button here at the back, which when pushed will indeed illuminate the eyes in an incredibly, very piercing, vibrant red. And this for me just completes the overall display. He looks so, so awesome. You can see there that this looks literally how it did in the movie. They have done such a superb job. So a really nice touch here by Mechanical Alliance. And for me, this really was the icing on the cake as far as the display of his robot mode does go. So turning to the transformation here for Thunder Warrior, as mentioned at the beginning of this review, the transformation, especially the first time round, is an absolute nightmare of an experience. And I myself have actually been postponing this review so that I can prepare the best transformation instruction that I can possibly give you. So here's hoping that I do shed some light on what is otherwise an incredibly complex conversion. So to begin with, what I would recommend doing is turning your attention here to the back and just taking these sections and collapsing these down in order to conceal this mechanical detail. Of course, repeat the same process here on the opposite side. You'll then want to take these sections, which should be extended all the way, and just compress those in like so. We can then take this back assembly, and essentially you're just going to want to pull this here away from the body and collapse it there along the side of the back. We can then take the jet region, and you're going to want to pull this here forwards. I would then recommend taking these sections and actually pushing these forwards as well, as they can be very tedious later on during the transformation. So just hinge that up, and of course, repeat the same process here on the opposite side. So just hinge this here all the way up, just like so. You're then going to want to take the thruster here, rotate this around, and actually compress this here, just like that. I would then turn my attention here to the front, grab the crutch plate here, rotate this around in order to fill out the front of the nose cone. You'll then want to take the shoulders and disengage these sections here from the sides. Now, as we turn our attention here to the transformation of the shoulders, this is definitely an incredibly finicky part of the transformation. So to begin with, you're going to want to disengage this tab and slot, and then shift it along on this pin joint, and align line it up here with this secondary tab. So just snap that there into place. We can then turn our attention here to the underside, bring this entire region here down, rotate this here all the way in. And essentially what you're going to want to do here is ensure that the bicep is rotated in an alignment so that when we do proceed with transformation, we are left with something that looks along the lines of this so that you can actually compress this double joint later on during the transformation. With that complete, you're then going to want to align all of this up. You can see here that this section will come up and down and just snap that there into place. And then this piece here will come over the top and will also clip there just like so. Of course, come here to this side and repeat the same process. So disengage the arm from that tab, slide it along, on that pin and realign it with the new tab. Turn your attention here to the armpit joint, bring this section here forwards, and then bring this here all the way down. And then we can just hinge this out of the way so that we are left with something which looks along the lines of this. And then just compress that, bring this section here over, snap that into place, take this here, shift that. And then once again, the arms should be positioned to something which looks along the lines of this. We can then turn our attention here to the torso. For this, you're going to want to take this cockpit region and disengage it here from this tab, which will then allow you to completely extend this entire region. So pop the head through this cavity here, bring these sections here out to the sides, take the nose cone, bring this forwards, flip this section forwards as well. I would not recommend tabbing this in just yet as there are still a few steps that you have to do here. You're going to want to take this cockpit region, rotate this entire assembly around, take these pieces, hinge those in. And I personally would actually recommend to bring these pieces in now before you actually solidify the nose cone. As if you do connect the nose cone up, they're going to be very difficult to actually reinsert into this section later on. Of course, come here to this side and repeat the same process. So just pull this here forwards, tuck that in there. And then here for the head, just snap that into place like so. Take the nose cone, align this up appropriately, clip all of that in. And then of course we can just take these two halves and connect those into place. You'll then want to rotate these pieces here around on the ball joints. And of course, these here are going to snap into those hollow gaps. 
spin around here to the opposite side and repeat the exact same process and then we do have a rotation joint here that you'll want to bring all the way around now a vital part of the transformation that i would actually recommend doing now as it is very difficult to do when you actually do connect the legs is you can see we do have this tiny little tab now this is the root of all evil if you want a fully completed seamless looking jet mode you will want to ensure that this tab does stay pegged in to this slot throughout the entire transformation that is something that upon transforming the figure multiple times i have had an issue with and really wish it was actually easier to do but for this you're going to want to make sure that this turbine section here is actually brought forwards like this and then it is just a matter of bringing this here up moving the arms out of the way once again it's very finicky to do but just snap that and you will want to once again ensure that this does stay tabbed in throughout the entire transformation sequence. Now we turn our attention here to Blitzwing's legs. So for this, you're going to want to take the landing gear, rotate this section around and sit this flush along this panel and then also rotate this panel here around as well. Turn your attention here to this side and repeat the same process. So rotate the landing gear, collapse that piece, collapse that and rotate this section here around. If it hasn't done so already, you'll want to take this die cast piece, shift this forwards and actually compress it here along the base, much like this one here has already done. So I guess the looseness is an almost automorph gimmick, but then we can take these pieces, just disengage all of this here, moving this out of the way. You'll then want to take this entire back region and actually disengage this here from the back of the leg. Once that's complete, we can then take the foot, bring this entire section here all the way back. And then for this piece, you're going to want to hinge this here like so, and then use that screw joint to create something which looks along the lines of this. Once that's complete, we can then proceed to fold all of this out, take this back panel here, swing this forwards, and of course this tab will peg into that port. So clip that there into place, just extend all of the fins here at the top so that we can align them up appropriately later on during the conversion you'll then want to take this piece here rotate this here around and then for this we can just extend that and bring this here up and over we'll then want to fold out this section and you can see how we do actually have a slot that is designed to slide into this tab honestly more than likely it will probably detach throughout transformation but it is good just to have an idea of where everything is designed to go turn your attention here to this side and repeat the same process so bring that down fold this section here up and over bring this down as well disengage this take the foot and rotate this here all the way to the back like this and then bring this section forward hinge that use the screw joint then of course take this panel flip this up and over and snap that there into place and then essentially just fold out all of these collapsed panels that we have here we can then turn our attention here to the knee joints for these you're going to want to take them and compress those in and repeat the same process you'll then want to take these pieces and fully extend them as far as they possibly will go come here to this side and repeat the same process we can then flip here to the underside take these pieces here lift those up and rotate them around which will now actually reveal the plain detailing which i thought was a really really nice added touch and of course repeat the same process here for the opposite side, spin around here once again to the front. And for this, you're going to want to make sure that the landing gear is actually tucked in to this hollow gap here. So you can see how we do have a slot that's going to want to stay situated there. We can then bring all of this here up and over, ensure that everything is tabbed in. Spin around here to the front, bring this down. And then for this, as it is on a double joint, you'll just want to compress that so that it does align up appropriately with the rest of the jet. We can then take all of this, snap that into place. This section here will come around and you can see a huge slot that this tab here will peg into. So just compress that in and snap all of this here into place, which will then allow you to take this section and of course snap all of that there into place. So essentially we have one half of the plane fully converted. Come here to this side and repeat the same process. So ensure that the landing gear is tucked into this hollow gap so that this section here is just sitting straight with some clearance as this is where the fists are actually going to store. We can then bring this here up and over, bring this section down, slide that slot and tab like seen on the previous side. Turn your attention here to this section, bring this down and then for this, just align this up appropriately. Rotate this section here and just snap all of that there into place and then of course bring this section in 
clip that there over the top and do the same for this side. And then the thruster, you'll just want to straighten out and fold out the fin and ensure that this panel too does also stay in an alignment. We can then take these smaller panels and you're going to want to rotate these here, I believe in this way, so that we are left with something that looks along the lines of this. Of course, rotate to this side and repeat the same process. So bring that section down. And once again, you can see how the upper body has become detached from this region. I would just recommend to continuously keep going back to this to ensure that this does stay tabbed in, as when you do lock the arms into place, it will be very difficult to actually redo this step. Now, we're going to flip here to the underside, and this is definitely where things can become quite complex. So for this, you're going to want to take the arms, bring these sections here up and over, and then once that's up and over, it is just a matter of compressing this intake here into this hollow gap. So just clip that in there nice and securely. We can then turn our attention here to the arms and there is a panel that you're going to want to detach. Once that's detached, you can rotate the arm around so that we now have this section exposed facing forwards. You want to rotate the wrist in an alignment which looks like this, fold up this panel. And we do indeed have a tab here that will peg into this slot. So bring this here down and this is by far at least in my opinion the most annoying part of the conversion just take this and snap this in to place like so ensuring that this is now sitting flush along the side come here to this side and of course repeat the same process the clearance really is minimal for this particular region so you are going to have to apply some force just to overlap some of these panels which is unfortunate but just bring this section here up and over and then just take this and tab that there along the side you will then also once again want to take this panel here and just compress this down and of course we do have the same tab and slot here on the back that this arm will peg into so just clip that there into place ensuring that this panel does actually stay over the top of this bring that down clip that there into place and then these two halves should actually snap together once again the clearance is so minimal on this piece that it can create for a rather frustrating experience but you can see how they will tab together we of course do have various tabs and slots a tab and slot which you must ensure is connected is this tab and then this slot here so flip here to the top and just bring all of these in and snap all of these panels into place. Honestly, you are going to require quite a significant amount of force as there are continuous times where it will want to fight you and of course pop all of the panels off. But turn your attention here to the underside and just persevere with all of these tabs and slots like I'm doing here. And then with a bit of luck, hopefully, when we do flip it over, everything should stay into place so that we are left with something which looks along the lines of this you do not understand how happy i am to see that the majority of this has actually stayed together just bring this here up and over now and then we can take these sections bring them in and of course repeat the same process here on this side so just snap that into place and repeat the same process bring these panels here up and over and then ensure that this section is to tab securely into place. Bring this down, snap that into place, snap that into place, snap this section into place. Flip here to the underside and we are almost complete. You can see that we do have two tabs here and here that will actually peg into these two slots. So open these sections here out, bring this all the way down, come to these pieces and connect them into place we can then take this snap that into place snap that into place as well and then just tuck all of this here under and then you will also want to ensure that these here are also tabbed in securely snap that into place turn your attention here to this part bring these sections down snap them into place as well fold out the wings on both sides and here we have thunder warrior fully transformed up into his amazing phantom 
fighter jet alternate mode and my goodness was the complex transformation absolutely worth it for such an incredible looking jet alt mode. And so taking a closer look here at Blitzwing in what I believe was his F4 Phantom fighter jet alt mode, I believe that Mechanical Alliance have done a fantastic job to the point where I'm actually conflicted as to whether or not I shall be displaying this figure here in robot mode or jet mode. I'm thinking more for jet mode as we haven't really gotten a good representation of Blitzwing in his alternate mode at least from Hasbro and seeing as the 301 looks terrific in robot mode I would definitely love to have this here displayed alongside it. You can see that as far as the sculpt and the paintwork is concerned it looks absolutely terrific. It really is incredible that you have this jet stored within that robot. Honestly I would recommend going back comparing the robot here to this jet and to me the complex conversion is absolutely worth it. You can see that the proportions everything about this just looks as if it has stepped straight out of the movie. It's such an awesome looking jet. You can see that we've got some fantastic decals here along the sides. Rescue, intake, jet, all of these different numbers along the sides too which are indeed accurate to his appearance from the movie. We've got the USAF logo here on the sides which I'm quite unsure as to how they've actually gotten away with that for copyright reasons but regardless you can see here that the detail is just absolutely on point. You really wouldn't think this here could transform. They've done such an awesome job. We've got the thrusters here at the back, the fuel tanks on the side, the missile pods which are actually removable although to me there isn't really a reason as to why you would want to remove them than besides perhaps a display reason and then as we turn here to the underside I believe they've done a fantastic job in actually concealing all of those robot mode parts and the detail and the paint does actually continue. They have not skimped out at all. You can see the missile pods have been completely painted. We've got those USAF logos here on the sides. Flipping here to the other side, USAF I just think they've done such a fantastic job from a bird's eye perspective. The overall proportions, everything just looks so, so screen accurate from the shape of the wings. Just honestly a fantastic looking jet mode. They have also gone to the extra extent of actually incorporating landing gear. So we can flip this section here forwards. These ones here are a little difficult to actually pry out to the extent where I do require the help of an additional tool. So for this, I would recommend getting something that is rather pointy as it can be very difficult to actually get these sections here out, but flip that up and then we can flip this section up and of course come here to this side and repeat the same process. So just flip this panel here up and then hopefully this side should be easier to come out. And there you've got Blitzwing's landing gear, which too is such a nice attention to detail and was really something that they did not have to do. And the landing gear does actually roll along the ground as well, which to me is superb. Honestly, I'm so, so impressed. It's very rare that I find myself being as impressed with the alternate mode as I am in the robot mode. And really, if they could have just fixed some of those tolerance issues in the robot mode, this figure would have no doubt been a 10 out of 10. I am that confident that this could even beat the upcoming Zeta Toys Blitzwing. Just judging from how that figure looks, as far as the paint is concerned, I believe this version here is superior. As I I do not have it in hand. I'm unable to tell as to whether or not that figure does have better tolerances, but depending on that, it may be the make or break as to whether or not this is better when compared to its rival, the Zeta Toys version. But for me, it just looks super, super cool. And so to conclude this review, overall, if you haven't guessed already, I am thoroughly impressed with what Mechanical Alliance has offered us here with their Thunder Warrior. As far as the robot mode is concerned, to me, it is pretty much spot on to how the actual CGI model looked, especially when comparing it to the 30 non-transforming figure which is pretty much the CGI version realized in a die cast and plastic form this figure comes incredibly close to pretty much matching what we got with that release the paintwork is fantastic by far one of the best third-party paint jobs that I have ever seen on a figure this really is a fantastic looking piece the paint looks very authentic to the movie it really does help to highlight some of the sharper details of the sculpt and of course the mechanical detail and really does give you the impression that some of the plastic components are indeed die cast I love the utilization of an LED function it really does help to bring the character to life and he looks fantastic when on display and of course for some photography as we turn our attention to accessories I think he pretty much comes with everything that I would want from Blitzwing at least what we actually saw from the movie the tolerances in the robot mode do slightly let it down in my opinion especially as far as the legs are concerned I wish we had better locking mechanisms for some of the panels but with that critique set off to the side we are left with one of the best looking robot modes for Blitzwing that we have ever gotten in a plastic and die cast format the transformation is 
is by far on the more complex side and when you do it the first couple of times it will feel as if you are in a nightmare but once you do get the hand of it and once you do actually find your own way and method of how you approach the transformation it can become rather intuitive and as you saw from the transformation we are left with a fantastic looking F4 Phantom Jet mode honestly it looks remarkable in my opinion it could even beat the look of the robot mode this is so so awesome and it is incredible to me that this jet is actually stored in that robot mode especially considering how tall and rather skinny Blitzwing was in his robot mode to get this very thick very large looking jet it really is incredible and the detail and the paintwork once again I think is remarkable so overall in my opinion at the time of this recording this is by far the best transformable representation of Blitzwing that we have gotten so far it absolutely abolishes the version that we got from Hasbro for the studio series version however of course this is going to be aimed at masterpiece collectors than as opposed to mainline collectors I really hope that you enjoyed this review if you did please do let me know down in the comment section below if you are looking to add this figure here to your collection he is currently available and in stock right now over at Shozy store and for that of course I shall include a link down in the description box below I would love to know down below on what you think of this figure will you be adding him to your collection and do you agree with me in saying that this is the best blitzwing that we have gotten so far I thank you all for watching and until my next review I'll see you then thanks for watching